Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show you guys how we can set up an animated countdown timer inside of DaVinci Resolve 16 with frame perfect counting. And by that I mean that if you want one second to elapse, it's going to match your timeline perfectly with no issues. So the way we need to set this up is to either use a default fusion title and modify one of the text elements, or to create our own title from scratch. So if you want to add in a title to the timeline, you have, you have the option of either bringing in a text plus and modifying the settings here. Uh, text plus has a lot of options that you can play around with, and I have other videos covering that, so I'm not going to focus too much on that. Or you can use a default Fusion title. So I'll drag this over here for now, and then we'll talk a little bit more about that after I show you guys how to set up the simple example with the text plus. So the first thing you're going to want to do with your text plus is to expand the duration of this title to the length that you need the countdown to be for. So if you're setting up a 10 second countdown animation, then we need to expand the length of this title clip to be 10 seconds. So if you hit T to go into trim edit mode, and then you left click on the side of the clip, then we can drag this out to expand it to be however long we need. So a title is by default going to be five seconds. But if we drag this all the way over here to where it says plus five seconds, then we get a result showing 10 seconds at the bottom, and that gives us a 10 second clip. The next thing we're going to need to do is to add a countdown formula to the styled text section. So if you left click on your title and you go to the inspector, you should see styled text as the first option. If you right click on that, you get a bunch of hidden options, including a text timer, which technically has a countdown tool, but I found that the text timer is actually harder to set up than simply using a mathematical expression. So let's go down to expression instead. So if you click on expression, a new box will pop up below the styled text, where it will say text title by default, and we need to put a formula inside of that box. So it's really simple. For a frame perfect count, we want to use the ceiling function, which if there's any remainder after a mathematical calculation, always rounds up. So if you end up with a result of 9.2, it's going to round up to 10. And in this case, we're talking about 10 seconds. So anything above 9 but below 10 rounds up to 10. And then inside of that, we have the starting time, which is the number of seconds we're going to want to count down from, minus the time. And uh, this is in frames, and actually we don't need that extra parentheses, technically speaking. And because the time is in frames, we divide that by the frames per second of our video timeline in order to turn that frames elapsed into seconds elapsed. So basically we have the countdown starting time minus the seconds that have elapsed in the title clip. Now note, this isn't the time since the beginning of the timeline, it's the time since the beginning of this video clip, which in this case is a title. So for a really simple example of a timeline that's going at 30 frames per second, starting at... I'm actually going to change this description there, because I actually found out that there's no need for a timer offset, because the time always starts from zero at the video clip. So for an example of 30 frames per second with a 10 second countdown, then we need to use the seal function on 10 minus the time divided by 30 frames per second. So if you take this and we paste it into this box here, then we're going to get a 10 second countdown that takes 300 frames to elapse. Now, to be sure that you are in 30 frames per second, or whatever number you need to put in there, go up to the file menu, do project settings, and you're going to see timeline frame rate here. This is the number that should go here to the division of time. If you don't make sure that they're the same number, then your countdown is either going to be too fast or too slow. But if you have this in there and you've expanded your title to be 10 seconds long, then we can go back to the start here, hit play, and you'll see that it is a frame perfect countdown with relatively minimum effort. And then at the end there, you can see it still ends at 1 because it doesn't have that 300 in first frame where it would actually show zero. So if I keep expanding this further out, it would it would go to zero at that last frame and then negative zero and negative one and so on and so forth. But a countdown should stop at zero. So in pretty much all cases, that's going to be exactly what you're looking for. Now, um, you can also do the same trick with any title template that exists in DaVinci Resolve by default, all of these fusion titles, or probably most third-party titles that you may decide to bring in. So what you need to do is uh, go to the title that you brought into the timeline, find the text area. So in this case, main text for the text plus is showing here. 
And then if there is an editable text box, then you can right click on that and go to expression in order to change the text in the box. So just once again, pasting that in there. And now it's going to have the countdown. Of course, uh, Fusion titles may take a minute to pre-render there. So if it's a little bit laggy, it's just because the effect hasn't been cached. But the countdown should work just like before. Now, if for some reason you can't find the text box exposed in the inspector for the Fusion title, you can always go to the Fusion page in order to look for the same thing. So if you click on Fusion, it's going to have media out and then a grouping of the title which you are trying to edit. So if you double click on that, you'll see a bunch of nodes, but generally it won't be too bad because all you need to do is find where one of the text nodes is located. Hopefully they've been labeled properly. So if you click on main text here and then you double click on the name and the inspector, then you will find the styled text field here, just like any text plus element. And you just need to do the right click expression and then paste in the formula seal with parentheses 10 minus the time divided by the frames per second and in parentheses. And of course, if you want to count down from 20 or 60 or however many seconds, uh, then you can feel free to uh, mess with this 10 number here. Now that that's done, a really classic animation that we can add to a 10 second countdown is going to be basically a clock wipe that takes the full 10 seconds as another indicator of how much progress has been made for that countdown. So if I drag in this uh, DaVinci Resolve logo onto the clip and I will expand the duration to match the title, let's actually swap the title to be above it so that we can still see it and put the logo on the bottom. Then we can start playing around with this and making our countdown a little bit more interesting. So I'm gonna decrease the scaled size of the logo to mm, something like 0.9, just so it's not taking up the full screen. We can also add some drop shadow to the text of the countdown so it's more visible if it's gonna be hovering over this logo. So let's just take care of that. And shading elements for the inspector text plus, we can go down to shading element three, which by default is black shadow. So if you enable that, you'll get a drop shadow behind. And if you want to make this drop shadow less blurry, then you can go down to softness and change the X to 2 and the Y to 2 as well. And I think that makes it look a little better. Also, if you want this countdown number to be much bigger, go back to the text tab and scroll down below style text and we'll find text and we'll find size here where we can just make this really big. Uh, we can just increase it to the max size of 0.5. If you need to make that even bigger, you can go to the video tab and increase the scaling to whatever you need. Okay, so now we need that clock wipe transition added to the DaVinci Resolve logo here. So to find that, go to Video Transitions in the Effects Library Toolbox, and we can scroll down to the Wipe section, and we want the clock wipe added to that uh, DaVinci Resolve logo image clip. I'll zoom in so we can see the timeline a little bit better. Now, in order for this to work, we want the clock wipe to occur over the duration of the entire PNG image clip. So to do that, we simply left click on the transition here, and it's much easier to select it when you are zoomed in. And then drag this border over to the far left. So this will mean that it's going to be transitioning over the entire duration of the clip, and when it gets to the end, it will be 100% disappeared, basically meaning that it's going to disappear over 10 seconds, just like the countdown. So if we go to frame zero and we hit play, we're going to get that clock wipe effect and it matches our countdown perfectly, which is really nice. Okay, so at this point, you might want to add in something like background footage. So I will just bring in uh, this stock clip onto the video track here. So we can see this is a pretty cool background stock animation, just another way of making um, our countdown a little bit more interesting. So what I added at the start of the video was actually a vignette added to this stock clip. The reason for that to make it take less focus because we really aimed at the countdown there. So if you want to add in a simple vignette effect, go to open effects and the effects library, scroll down close to the bottom and under stylize, I think is vignette. So if we drag this onto the clip, uh, bam, we have a vignette, which will make the outer edges of this background clip uh, darkened and it leaves the center a little bit brighter, but I, I think that's okay just using the default settings because we want to be focused on that countdown that's happening. So if I trim this stock clip here to 10 seconds and then we just go ahead and then we hit play from the start, we're going to have our 10 second countdown combined with a clock wipe and background footage in order to add a little bit more animation. So that's just a really nice and easy way you can add in 
a frame perfect countdown into DaVinci Resolve and make it into something of an interesting introductory clip. Final steps may be to just go online and find some sound effect that matches this animation that we've created, like a 10 second countdown, or one of those old film sound effects where the video starts rolling right before the main sequence plays, or just whatever you want to add in. So I've been Chris, I hope you guys got something out of this video, and I will see you guys in my future video content.